How's it going everyone? Welcome to this drawing tutorial, which is essentially like the second part to the last video we did, where we looked at the proportions of the head and the placement of all the facial features. And we also looked at a method that we could use and apply in our drawings to help us accurately recreate them. And so in that video, we left off having an outline of a portrait. In this one, we are going to take that further, build on that and render it realistically using pencil. So it's not going to be too realistic. It's just an example of how you can take that method further and end up having a realistic portrait where all the proportions are accurate as well. And so I'm gonna run you through the whole process and then I'm also gonna put a load of real-time footage at the end of the video because I know that a lot of you found that helpful. So hopefully you can take something away from that as well. But other than that, let's get into it. All right, so firstly, I'm using a 2B pencil to start and it's just in this pencil extender here. But we have our outline and now the main thing we need to focus on is realistically rendering, which involves creating textures and shades. So I usually jump right into drawing what would be the most challenging part of the drawing for some people, which is the eyes. Sometimes I start in different places, it just really depends, but when it comes to realistic drawings, getting the eyes accurate is essential in making it look like the person you are drawing. Here I'm always looking at the reference and I'm just starting off by more permanently outlining these eyes. On the reference image you can see that there is a lot of shadow around the eye and just around the eyelid. So as I'm texturing the eye, I'm taking that into consideration. Also I sharpen the pencil as much as I can. It makes it so much more easier to create details in the work when the pencil is at a sharp point. I work my way up to the eyebrow and from carefully studying the image we are drawing, I place similar marks to resemble the hair. Let me tell you a good tip for realistic drawing like this, especially if your goal is to recreate a drawing of something from reference. The tip is to look at everything as just lines or marks. Now, this might sound a bit confusing, but everything that is in this drawing has been created from a build-up or a collection, should I say, of different lines and pencil marks. Now what helps me decide where to place these marks is the reference image, because even though that is a photograph, I sometimes try to treat it in the same way as a drawing, just a collection of various marks that we create onto the paper. That might not make much sense, but take this eyebrow for instance, it might not look like what you would imagine. It's not Ollie's individual hairs, instead they are blended into each other or cast under a shadow which makes part of the eyebrow just appear darker and not as detailed as you would expect. From noticing small details like this, I'm able to approach the drawing in a similar way. Anyways, I'm slowly working upwards here. From a starting point like this, you can then just continue in any direction that you want. I try to create a lot of the right side of the drawing so my hand doesn't smudge as I'm working. I'm still using a 2B to create all of these turns and different shades. I just do this by controlling the amount of pressure I apply onto the paper. I'm also not focusing too much on the skin texture in this guide. I'm working on sketchpad paper and so the texture of the paper makes it harder to create a smooth and realistic impression. I'd consider this a realistic sketch that emphasizes the shading more than the actual texture. Regardless, I do change the motion of the pencil to hint at some texture. Like around the bottom of this eye, for example, you can see how it separates itself from the rest of the face. Going over to this right eye, I'm taking the same approach. A lot of people struggle when it comes to drawing the second eye. It somewhat needs to match up with the other one, but due to having the guidelines created previously, I'm able to work into this confidently, knowing that it's pretty much of the same size as the other one. Also, you might see a small eraser I use sometimes. That's a Mono Zero eraser. All the equipment I use is in the description. I want to also mention the direction of the pencil strokes. A lot of the time, the direction that you're shading and the pencil is going in can help show the form of the subject. Above the eye here and just below the brow, you can see how the pencil strokes are angled and directed in a way that follows that shape. You can read all this information from the reference image. Towards the side of the face, it seems to get darker. There is more of a shadow and so I just apply more pressure that gets darker results. Also I try to create a gradual fade from the lighter area of the face and then to this darker part. I still continue to use a 2B pencil as I work upwards for the hair. It would have been a sensible idea to change to a softer pencil, however I stick with this one. Think of this as a base layer. I tend to work into this with a darker pencil later on anyways. When you draw hair you need to focus on the highlights. It's small additions like this that help give that realistic appearance, rather than it being all one solid shade. 
you don't want the hair to look like a Lego man's, and so we have to have some highlights and various pencil strokes in different directions. It really depends on the hair you are drawing, in this case there was a lot of highlights to consider. Straight away I create these highlights by just working around them. So for instance a useful method would be to draw the outlines for the highlights first and then fill the rest in. I'm doing it as I go along which means it won't exactly be accurate but I should still be able to give a realistic impression. Also as the hair meets the top of the head, we start to see more of a separation between the individual strands of hair. You'll notice as well that the highlights in the hair give it direction. We have a messy and spiky hairstyle and that can be seen through this. I eventually work my way down to the lower section of the face and begin working on the lips. I also create a starting point for the facial hair just so I can get an idea of how that will look. I have created a full guide on how to draw facial hair. With the lips, I try to recognise the texture I have to create. Usually lips involve small creases and smooth vertical lines. As the two lips meet, we emphasise that by making a line a lot more bolder and darker. As I work further into the facial hair, I follow the same process, treating each small mark that I make as an individual hair, but also taking into consideration the effect that shadows have. I won't go too in depth with the facial hair, like I mentioned a minute ago you can go ahead and check out that guide that I made on it if you want to. But I also draw in the neck which is primarily in shadow due to the head and also there is a shade around the bottom of the chin that meets the facial hair, I just create this by darkening these outlines. So now we have a pretty good looking image but this was all done using a 2B pencil. The blacks could be a lot darker and the portrait needs some overall depth. At this stage I put aside the 2B pencil and take a darker one, perhaps a 7B or as dark as possible for the hair and a 4B or something for other areas. All I'm doing here is starting by working over what I have done with a darker and softer pencil. I previously created all of the important textures and things so I can just carefully darken these areas. I'll put most of this in time lapse and I'll also put some real time footage at the end. You can see how darkening these areas and making the shadow and highlights more obvious will really give the image more depth. Finally after going over the drawing with a darker pencil and also working into some areas a little bit more, the drawing didn't look too bad. Like I said earlier this was more or less an example to build on the previous video where we focused on the proportions, but that pretty much concludes this drawing. So there we go, that is how to realistically render a portrait using pencil and it didn't actually turn out too bad. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you can take something away from it. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like because it really helps me out and also I'm going to leave the video playing out with some real time footage. I've put the timestamps at the bottom of the video as well so hopefully that will make it easier for you to navigate through it because there's a lot of real time footage and it, it might get a little bit boring. Um, because it's a very slow process but if you understand that and hopefully you can apply it to your own drawings then you should improve. Anyways, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.